and welcome to Jo Gallard's Writing Life. I'm Jo, I'm a writer and script consultant and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about writing. Now this week I wanted to go a little off-piste and talk um, a bit about uh, writing for video games. While storytelling in games has become more sophisticated in recent years, the approach to narratives within games and game writing is very different to the approach uh, one would take when they're writing for film or television. Uh, there's lots of differences and um, whilst I would say that they're not completely unrelated, I'd say film and TV are like distant cousins to games when it comes to narratives and characterisation and just writing in general. So I've put together a few tips which hopefully will maybe answer a few queries out there for people that want to know a little bit more about writing for video games. So tip number one would be learn to love collaboration. Creating a video game is a huge team effort. There are level designers, digital artists, coders, all kinds of technical creators involved in getting a game to market and the writer is just like one tiny cog within a huge machine. On a side note, some game studios, their creative directors are the writers, so they're not going to necessarily hire, um, hire in a writer. But that being said, video game characters and stories are becoming more complex and there is now a trend um, for studios to actually hire writers specifically and to bring that intrinsic narrative instinct that trained writers have to the video game. But if you are brought into a game studio, then like I said, as a writer, you're a very small cog in a very big machine. So you need to collaborate. There's so many other things going on in a game and the story and the character uh, or what the character says is just such a small part of it. So you will be, as a writer, you will be working uh, directly with the level designer and the level designer's teams because they're basically the people that decide what is going to happen in a particular environment or a particular scene and then you have to then beef up what is essentially a one-dimensional character uh, with one action and then you have to think about narratively how you are going to build out from that and make it emotive and engaging. Also bear in mind in this situation when you are collaborating with level designers and animators and coders or whoever you happen to be uh, collaborating with these people are coming at their work from a totally different perspective to you they're not used to talking about stories they're not used to talking about narrative arcs um, you know characterization that kind of thing their language and their tools are different to yours so it's not like when you work on a film or a tv show and you'll be chatting with the director when you're talking to um digital creators, you're not necessarily going to have that common uh, dialogue and that shorthand about stories and story arcs. So bear in mind you're going to have to collaborate with someone that's essentially from a different world or a different background to you. And that's amazing, that's a, a positive thing, it's not a negative thing, it's really great and I think um, both sides can learn a lot from each other. Now, my second tip is to remember it's not all about you. It's not all about the writer. As a screenwriter or a novelist or a TV writer, the story begins with you. Um, it's a blank page and then from that blank page, you create the story It's the starting point for every project. Even in film and TV, which is really collaborative, um, there is nothing before there is the script. However, uh, with games, you might come on board when uh, the environments and the characters have already been created and it's your job then to create some sort of emotionally engaging narrative um, for the audience or for the players. Often many things are already put in place before you come on as a writer. Uh, you know, even there might have even been like a rough storyboarding of um, narrative events. There'll probably be digital sketches or animations of those characters, but like I said before, they're going to be very one-dimensional in terms of personality and characterisation. So it's your job as the writer to add a complexity and an authenticity um, and an interior life to these characters. All of this has got to fit within um, the level designer's ideas and the general game development and the scope of gameplay. Think about the game environments. So, you know, what kind of elements um, are the, is the character going to have to their personality, which will mean that they can survive within this environment or they can develop within this game world. They've got to succeed. So, you know, there's a lot to think about. And as I said in the first point, collaboration is key. Tip number three, know your genre from your genre. 
in video games often a level designer or a creative director or a game creator or basically anyone within the game world will talk about genre in terms of the genre of the game. So that could be a role playing game, a first person shooter, a third person action adventure. You know, there's so many uh, different genres of game. Whereas in the story world, we would talk about genre in terms of crime, horror, action, romance. We talk about the genre in terms of the narrative. So basically what you need to do is to take both of these genres into account. Be aware of the genre of the game. Educate yourself a little bit about that genre of the game. Is it a first person shooter? If so, how are you going to um, build the characters and the story around the genre of the game? But then you also have to look at the story genre and how that is going to play into the game as well. Because you may find that you're still gonna be hitting the same genre beats that are expected of you narratively. Um, even though you're writing for a game, if you're writing a zombie game, you're still going to expect some like jump scares and um, some really intense chase scenes, whether that's in a film or a game. It's important to know about the story genre, but it's also important to know about the overall genre of the game. And um, it's important to differentiate uh, between these two when you're in discussions with uh, the game creators or the game team, so that you're both on the same page and you both know what you're talking about. On a side note, just in general, it's good to educate yourself about the terminology within uh, games. You know, if you're going to be working uh, a game studio or you really, really want to work in the games industry, then uh, perhaps think about um, reading a couple of books on it or doing a short course on game design or something, just so you're up with the jargon and it doesn't feel like a completely alien world. Tip number four, the player experience is the most important thing. Games are fundamentally uh, a leisure activity. They're about having fun and being challenged in inspirational, creative, exciting environments. When it comes to playing a game, the player's ultimate goal is to beat the game or win the game. And any kind of story or narrative will always come further down the list. Ultimately, players are fickle if they have to change their mind or change their intention halfway through the game in order to win the game, then they'll do that. But basically, the player's ultimate uh, goal is to win the game. So therefore, when it comes to creating uh, the main player character, it's quite tricky. It's quite a tricky thing to get right because you obviously want a character that someone can engage with because you you want someone to want to play as that character but at the same time they don't really care about the backstory or uh, any sort of emotional ties so you know it's a, it's a very um, challenging thing to get right in terms of the balance of characterization and gameplay. An important thing to remember is that um, the player character or the protagonist character, their wants and their needs and their goals are not the most important story elements within the game. When you're thinking in traditional characterization terms um, and you're thinking about the approach that you would take with a novel or a film, you're thinking about a character's wants and needs and goals um, and it's, it's the main character because that's the person that's driving the story forwards. Whereas in a game, I think you need to take those aspects, you know, of wants and needs and goals and desires um, and put them into your supporting characters, so your non-player characters. Because what they say and what they do um, and how the player character interacts with those non-player characters is going to have more of a narrative impact on the game than trying to engage the player with the main character's sort of backstory and stuff like that. Whereas if you're actually engaging with other characters in the game, then you can kind of control the narrative and the story experience in that way. It's a really interesting way to sort of flip it, to flip the idea of the supporting characters suddenly becoming the focus of your storytelling. Once you get used to thinking in that reverse way, storytelling within video games becomes much, much easier. Tip number five is about format. And this is something that I was really, really interested to find out about when I first um, looked into writing for video games because I was like how how would you do it would you write it like a script and say this this and this happens in the game and then you know there's a bit of character dialogue uh, you know it's really confusing and I just couldn't imagine what kind of format uh, video game writing would take to be honest it's more of a like a spreadsheet a spreadsheet type thing in fact a couple of 
games uh, writers that I've worked with actually have written in Excel, you know, Microsoft Excel. You basically have a column for the uh, story or story arc or narrative, whatever, and then you have a column for any sort of dialogue and story related action. Um, and that fits in to a much bigger sort of spreadsheet which will have the environment that you're in, the level designer's goals, so the goal could be for a character to find um, a secret or to find a gun or something like that, and that is basically the whole point of the scene for the level designer, is for the character to pick up a gun or for the player to pick up a backpack or whatever, so that will be there and then also on the spreadsheet will then be the, the layer that you put on, which is the storytelling layer or the interior characterization layer, whatever. So generally there isn't a set format like there is in screenwriting and uh, playwriting and every other kind of writing really. Video games are kind of writing their own rules uh, when it comes to formatting. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because like I keep saying, the story element is just a tiny tiny part of the overall uh, design of the game and the gameplay experience so it would make sense that it just occupies a couple of columns within a much larger spreadsheet about a game but obviously like if you go into a game studio every studio is going to have a different way of doing things so sort of be prepared to roll with the punches and go with it but at the same time don't expect a traditional screenwriting format And my final tip, tip number six, would be do your research. As with any writing job, I'd hope that you would do your research. You know, if you watch a movie and you decide that you want to become a screenwriter, then I would suggest going on a short course to educate yourself about screenwriting, read a book on screenwriting, watch movies. And it's the same for video games. You know, just because you might be excelling in one area of writing, it doesn't automatically mean that you can just flip those skills and uh, plonk them into the video game world. As I explained in this video, you have to come at the storytelling from a different angle, you know, you have to come at characters and structure and everything from a new angle. Learn those skills, you know, try and educate yourself about games. If you hate video games, don't try and write for video games. If you don't like them and you don't enjoy playing them, then I'd suggest not bothering, you know, try something else. If you do enjoy games or you're curious about games and you want to learn more, then I definitely say play games. If you want to write for games, then play games and play more than one kind of game. I'm a big fan of console games. I've uh, been playing console games since like Mega Drive, Sega Mega Drive days. Um, but there's other types of games out there as well. There's like hidden object games for PC and Mac, mobile games. Although in mobile games, they don't offer as much opportunity to, start to tell such big stories. Whereas like console games, you know, it can be 10, 20, 30 hours worth of gameplay. So you can tell a long story, you know, people are committed. You don't necessarily get that same level of commitment with casual gaming where you might pick up your phone and just play a quick game and then put it back down but that's not to say that some of the games some of the hidden object games and some of the sort of crime and investigation games they do have a narrative and they do need writers so you know see which ones you like and then perhaps focus on what it takes to write in that particular game genre Here in the UK, uh, the BAFTA website and BAFTA Guru, they've got heaps of stuff on games um, and some videos on games and professionals talking about the game industry. I think they also hold events. I know Creative England holds gaming events now as well. So uh, just get online and um, see if there's some events you can go to. Even if some of the events uh, seem a bit more technical to you, I think it's worth, if you're really, really interested in working within this industry, then just going along uh, if you can afford a ticket, or even better, if it's a free event, I'd say 100% go along. Um, because you never know, you're going to learn something about the industry. And even if it's kind of a technical event and it's more uh, suited to games coders or programmers or level designers, you know, it might be an opportunity for you to make some contacts and learn a little bit of industry jargon or a little bit about some upcoming new technologies. Um, you know, I just say take every opportunity you can. If there's no events near you or you can't really get around, I'd say look on YouTube. There's actually a documentary, The Last of Us, which is my absolute favourite game. Um, Naughty Dog made a documentary called The Making of The Last of Us or something like that. It's on YouTube. I'll try and link it in the info bar below. Watch things like that. That gives you a really good idea of how many people are actually involved in creating a game and the different processes that games go through. You know, documentaries like that, they're really great for uh, just informing you and just 
I don't know, just opening your eyes, I guess, to an industry which, to me, when I first was interested in, like, the writing side of it, the games, I found the industry to be a little inward-looking. It wasn't really easy to find out information about video game writing if you weren't sort of technically or um, digitally minded, you know, which I wasn't. There doesn't seem to be a massive amount of literature on the subject. I mean, I haven't recently searched for any but I'm sure that there are blogs out there and I'm sure that there are online articles if you search um, which can give you more of an insight into video game writing. When I first looked into it in 2009 there was a book out called um, Professional Techniques in Video Game Writing which was published in 2008 so you know so, like technology moves so fast so some of it, the information might be out of date now but it was edited by uh, Wendy Despain, Despain or Despain but I'm not sure that there could be other books being written or out there right now. So yeah, just do your research. If you're really, really serious about games writing, then, you know, it's a growing industry. It's growing fast. I think you need to get stuck in, just dive in and, um, and educate yourself. I think the games industry is a really exciting industry and it offers a great platform for new and innovative storytelling. And I think, uh, whereas before it might have been um, void of emotion and it was just all about violence and fear and shooting and everything like that, I do feel that like games and their narratives have evolved and they are trying to create really authentic, really empathetic characters that go on amazing story journeys that are totally immersive. So um, it really is an exciting industry and I hope that this video has given you a few tips on writing for video games and inspired you up to go out and find more out about the industry. I am very passionate about this and I am very excited about uh, games, I love them. So um, yeah, hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, um, please subscribe to my channel. There's lots of other writing videos on here. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at joeguards underscore writing life or on Twitter at joeguards. And I think that's it for this very enthusiastic video on games writing. Until next time, have a great week, keep writing, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.